Greetings friends. Hope this finds you well. Rexon on here. And today's video, we're going to be talking about everything cable management. So you see my setup behind me. Did you get a free toaster with this too? I'm going to go through what tools I use, what uh, connectors uh, I use, uh, fasteners, power strips, surge protectors. We're going to talk about it all. And then a bunch of other accessories and one-off things that uh, you may need to consider depending on what your build is. You might ask, what do I know about cable management? Well, I started off my career in a telecommunications company. It's the cable guy! Right out of college. I actually dropped out of college. Your mom goes to college. Um, <laughs> to start that job because we were having a baby. Um, and I worked there for 17 years. So I started off climbing telephone poles, running drops to houses running uh, cable, telephone lines, ethernet lines. Um, I was one of the first high-speed data technicians when high-speed data came out. Yeah, there was a time when if you wanted to connect to the internet, you had to use a phone line. It's got a 28.8 BPS motor. Who remembers that? If you wanted to play a game. Shall we play a game? If the game even supported multiplayer, <laughs> you had to use dial-up. And then if somebody picked up the phone, well, your connection was hosed. So that's how far back I go. Got into fiber splicing, uh, and then I moved into the IT side of the business. So racking and stacking servers, storage arrays, networking equipment, running power, uh, ethernet, fiber channel, uh, and then I had to make it all look good. So I have a lot of experience from the enterprise corporate side of that, but also, I've been building my own setups for over 20 years. So <laughs> I date back to the days of cutting out holes in the side of computer cases to glue acrylic panels so that we could have windows before anybody even thought about making windows for side panels and cases. <laughs> so that's, that's how long I've been, I've been doing this game. It's all my opinion based off of my experience. The things that I'm gonna talk about are what I like to use, what, you know, through trial and error, some of the things, you know, I've tried a lot of different things. So yeah, I'm not, I don't consider myself an expert, but I do have a lot of experience in this. And hopefully some of the things we're gonna talk about, I can convey that to you and it'll help you in your cable management journey or, if, or the, the next build that you're planning. I'm gonna talk about the build behind me, which you can see I have my desk, standing desk raised up so you can kind of see underneath of it. But I'm also in the process of building two new setups. One for my future son-in-law, which is going to be a laptop gaming setup. And then my son, um, who, when I built this setup, got kicked out of the basement because if you go back and look at that build video from this desk, um, we had two big, long IKEA setups. Um, we had our computers side by side. So he got moved up to the guest bedroom because he doesn't have enough room in his room for a complete setup. He's been using like a little tw uh, two foot by two foot Ikea table um, for the last, I don't know, almost year. So I'm building him a, a new desk. And I'm gonna be talking about the cable management for both of those as well as mine. So I'm gonna get into all of that. Stay tuned, let's get started. Before we get into specifics, let me show you where I store everything. Not everything, but the majority of it. This is a, my mechanical room. So you can see I've got a bunch of these uh, Rubbermaid Fast tracks, I think is what they're called. I love these things. Super easy to hang up. Got all kinds of different attachments for them. Sorry about the noise. This room is a little noisy because I got all my networking equipment in here as well. But, so this is like tool wall. And I have tools in the garage, you know, for, you know, a lot of these are duplicates or older tools that I'll keep in here. Keep them handy as I'm working on stuff down here. Just the basic stuff. Um, and I'll talk about specifically what you need, what you probably should have for cable management to make it, you know, easy for you. But, um, you know, got my networking rack, a bunch of uh, Ubiquiti Unify stuff, UPS, cable modem and such, storage, and then all the cables. So I know a lot of people are probably like, why do you need all that? Like, it, it's super overkill. Well, I have a lot of friends that will come over. They may need a cable. Um, I do a podcast with a couple of good friends. If they need anything, neighbors need anything, parents, siblings, I got you covered. Like, this is uh, kind of like my mini stock room. <laughs> and if you look at my networking setup, I mean, 
it's, it's just nice to have a variety of cables. Um, got all my kind of my fasteners that I like to use, some stuff that I tried that suck that I'll talk about. Um, and then anything that's not on the wall, you know, as far as I got some extra LED lighting stuff, like there's some Philips Hue stuff in there, some Govee, got all my audio cables in the middle one, and then video cables, HDMI, DVI, and display port. And then that case is a bunch of random screws and anything extra from like motherboards or cases. And as long as I don't dump this over on me. I mean, this thing, I've had this thing for probably 15 years. So it's got just about every extra screw that I've ever gotten from a motherboard or a case. Look at that. If you can't find it in here, it doesn't exist. And then on the bottom is just a bunch of random other random stuff. And I have dumped this before, by the way. Um, power connectors, splitters. There's some SATA cables in here. A motherboard. A plate. Just a bunch of random stuff. So, that's how long I've uh, <laughs> been doing this stuff and collecting crap like that. All right, let's talk about tools. So I'm gonna start off with what I think are like the essentials. Like if, if, if these are the only tools that I could have or if I was buying everything from scratch and I didn't have any tools, like this is probably what you wanna start with. Um, some kind of cable cutter uh, to cut cable ties. This is mostly what I use this for. Um, cable ties, uh, you could cut, um, Velcro strips, um, of course, you know, there have been many different versions of this, but this one's really cheap, very sharp, perfect for cutting cable ties. Uh, a, a Phillips and flathead screwdriver, you know, you could buy one of the combo jobs where you get both of them in one. A tape measure, a small one, um, like six, 12 feet. Uh, I have various different sizes. I like the smaller ones for doing stuff inside just because you don't normally need like a 25 foot. So the uh, the six foot to 12 foot ones are, are really good. Uh, a level. Really handle f handy f to make sure that your monitors are level if you're mounting them on stands, um, you know, or maybe other things that you need to do if you're trying to level something mounting under the desk like a shelf or something like that. I like this cheap plastic one. I don't even remember where I got this at, but hardware store, I'm pretty sure. But um, it's an Empire level manufacturing court. But it's like a composite plastic. The reason I like this one, for especially for inside stuff, um, is that it's not gonna mar anything up. I don't have to worry about it damaging my monitors or the surfaces that it's on. Um, a metal one can do that. Some of the metal ones are magnetic as well, which don't always want to put magnetic stuff around electronics. Um, but yeah, I like this plastic one. It, it, in, if you're trying to level something on the wall, this plastic won't leave any marks on the on most walls, whereas the metal ones can. So that's why you know, it's really cheap. And then pencil, you know, some kind of pencil, you know, regular, whether that's a regular number two. Um, I also like the uh, carpenter carpenter's pencils that you can get from hardware stores because they're flat and they won't roll. <laughs> um, and then uh, permanent markers. So I always keep like a black, uh, a silver, and maybe like a brown. Uh, not only for marking things, especially if I'm gonna drill like a drill hole or something, I like to use the permanent markers. But these are also really good for filling in scratches or hiding scratches rather. They don't really fill them in, but if you get a scratch in something that's been painted or stained, um, you can take this uh, mark over that and then just kind of rub it in and it just blends it in, especially for Ikea stuff like the mound and um, all the uh, the drawers, especially if you get like the black brown, um, uh, it, it's great <laughs> for hiding scratches uh, and then you can get them almost in any color. So this is like, this will be like the essential toolkit um, that you want to have. And then moving out from there, you know, there's a myriad of other options. But I would probably say you want a good pair of scissors. 
Um, nothing too crazy, but if you're going to be cutting uh, Velcro strapping or double-sided tape, uh, it's nice to have a good pair of scissors. Scissors aren't the best for cutting cable ties. You, they can, but uh, they usually don't get them close enough and they'll leave like a little nub or the, if they're not really, really sharp, sometimes it can be difficult. So I would say scissors would be next. Maybe some longer, thinner magnetic tip screwdrivers. These are really good for installing motherboards and stuff like that um, and can be handy under the desk for cable management as well. Um, you might need a hammer uh, depending on what kind of fasteners you're using. Um, you know, a small one for inside, got the big boys outside. And then here's a couple different options. So you got some side cutters, some wire cutters, like more, a lot thicker. Um, you could use these for cable ties too and other things. Uh, I use these to cut like coaxial cable and thicker cables. Um, good for that. And you get like a bull nose style of the cutter. So if you need to cut something really flat against like a surface, these are good for that. Or pulling out staples. Like you got to be careful. You don't want to like doll them up. I mean, there's, you could probably use just regular like bull nose, like electrician's pliers. These have like a bull, the bull nose, the flat nose. So if you need to pull something out like a staple, a nail, these are really good for that. And they usually have like a cutter on them to where you can also cut stuff. So it's a good option. And then maybe some needle nose if you, if you need to get into a tight space or something really, really small. Um, it's good to have that. So those are some other things that are nice to have, but uh, don't have to have them. Um, and then from there, you might want to consider some power tools. Just makes things a little bit easier. Um, I have a lot of, you know, power tool type devices in the garage that I use for home improvement projects and things like that. You can use that for cable management and stuff. Um, sometimes they're a little unwieldy, uh, you know, a little bulky for that type of work, but they, they get the job done. Uh, so you got the uh, impact driver and then also the drill, drill driver. Uh, so if you need to drill holes um, or if, and then you put your screws and such and with uh, the impact driver. What I've been using mostly the last few months at least um, has been this um, Hodo. It's H-O-T-O. -O. I'll put a link to all this stuff down in the description or it'll be on my solo.to slash rex and all. Um, this is cool because you can use it as a screwdriver, a drill driver, a drill or a screwdriver. So I just switch in this little gear here. And then most power tools are variable speed, but this one, I don't know if it's like because it's got this digital motor or whatever, but it's the variability of this over something like this. Like I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. There it goes. This is much harder to control variable speed than this. And I, I think it's because maybe the, uh, the motor that they're using much more precise, really good for cable management under the desk type stuff. You could even use this to build computers and whatnot. Charges via micro USB. Um, and then it's got charge level and stuff on the back. And then you can adjust, I think it goes from, let's see, 30 down to, one. So that just controls the speed. See, I usually keep it on around 10. So it's nice. That way, if you don't want something going super fast, um, you can use it. And like I said, it has a the battery meter as well on the back. I charge this thing like once a month, if that. I mean, it's, it's really nice. And then it comes with these bit sets. So it's got some drill bits and some you know, it's got a Phillips, a flathead, an Allen, a star, uh, a bunch of different types that you would probably use commonly um, that come with this as well. So it's a, it's a, if you don't need like the, the big, you know, 18 volt, 20 volt, whatever power tools, you know, if you're not going to be using that stuff around the house, this something like this is really cool for inside just about anything you would need to do inside the house. 
where you don't need that full impact uh, driver like you would get in, a, in, a, in something like this. Um, outside of that, I do want to mention a couple of other things that I use occasionally, not every day because um, I don't need to. This is an electronic duster. Um, so if you're using compressed air, this would replace that. This, you know, you plug it in, of course, it's uh, powered by uh, just a regular wall socket. And this one is, it's made, it's a MetroVac. It's called a DataVac electric duster. I got this on Amazon, I believe, but I've had it forever. I don't even, I don't know if they still make this or if there's a newer version, but um, yeah, it's all metal except for like the plastic handle, but the, the body of it is, it's super sturdy. Um, it does have a couple of different tips that you can change. Um, I like, I keep this one on there most of the time because it is the highest pressure. So it's really good if you have a really dirty case, take it outside, this thing will just clear it all out. Um, way better than compressed air. And it also has more, one of the important things, because you, you can probably use like a shop vac or something if you reverse it to where it's blowing. But this has a filter, so you're not going to get a bunch of dirty air blowing into your electronics, which is nice. Um, so it's, it's something that's nice to have if you want to clean electronics out. Um, and then I also have this little uh, Opolar, O-P-O-L-A-R. It's a, it's a little mini vacuum, so it's good for like cleaning up your keyboard and around your desk. Um, and it's got a couple of different attachments as well. But you can also has like a little twist and then you pop this out and you can use this as a blower or a duster. So if you didn't want to go with something like the, uh, the data vac, you could buy this and you get a vacuum and a blower in one. Again, I'll put all the links down below, but I use, I use this quite a lot to clean keyboards and crumbs and just little messes around the desk and honestly around the whole basement. Um, and it charges over micro USB. Um, got a couple of different speeds, really easy to clean. Got a filter in here. Um, pretty cool. So that's the tools that I use. Um, like I said, core, the core stuff that I use all the time. And then, you know, some of the stuff I don't use uh, every day, but I use it when it's needed. So hope that's helpful. Now let's talk about fasteners. Uh, at the core, the things I use the most, and again, I'm not an expert. I don't claim to know everything or be the best at this stuff. This is just what I found works for me. So this is what I'm passing along from my experience and um, knowledge that I've gained for doing this for 20 years. If I were only gonna have the essentials, this is what I would buy. So cable wraps, tie wraps, um, whatever you wanna call them. I believe these are eight inch. Uh, they can fit just about every use case. There are other sizes, but if you're getting just one, get the eight inch. Double-sided tape, um, I usually get 3M, but there are other brands. There are some things to where this is just the best option. Um, I usually, I, I try not to double-side tape anything that I don't have to anymore. I'd rather attach it with some kind of screw, uh, just because it's easier to remove. And if you've ever had to clean double-sided tape off of something, or try to get something that's double-sided taped off, it's a nightmare, it can be a nightmare. So I only use this if I have to. Um, Velcro straps. So I just buy this by the roll. Um, it's just, uh, I have black, I think this is like a half inch. They have different sizes, but half inch seems to be the best for what I use it for. I can just take this, take a pair of scissors, cut a piece off whatever length I want, bundle cables together, especially like on the back of a PC, stuff that you may have to take apart every now and then to run a new cable, or if you're changing out your video card or a monitor or adding a new USB device, instead of having to cut table, cable ties and <laughs> take a chance of cutting a, a, an actual cable or something, I, I, I like using the, uh, the roll of Velcro. Um, and then the other thing as far as like the actual fasteners, uh, I'll show you some other ones that I've used that I don't really use anymore unless I have to. Um, this is my go-to right here. So uh, like I said, I'll, I get these on Amazon. They come in a kit um, and I'll link them down below. But it comes with six inch cable ties. 
uh, screws. And these screws are nice because I think they're like half an inch and they have a flat head on them and they're Phillips. So they're perfect for almost all, under all desks. They're not gonna be too long. And then the, the last piece is the actual little clip. Um, and I'll, I'll show a picture, a close up of this from the, the webpage, but basically you put the screw in here and then that gets screwed down to your surface and then you use the tie wraps and you can use more than one tie wrap. You can, it's just, this thing is it, not going anywhere. So I, I, I'll give you an example of one here. I see a little pre-drilled hole right here. And you can twist this. So whatever direction you need it to go in to route your cable through it most effectively. And then you can tape your cable tie. You know, you can use the larger ones if you need to, if you have a bunch of cables as you're running through there, um, whatever you need to do. The, and these, they're not going nowhere. Like the tape's not gonna fail after a few months. Uh, it's very gonna be very easy to remove when you need to remove it. This is just, this is my go-to. This is almost the only fastener I use. Unless for some reason I can't screw into something or I don't wanna put a screw in, into something. Um, then I'll use some double-sided tape or another option. Um, but a couple of other things that I've tried or may use depending on the circumstance, but not all the time. Um, I also have the white Velcro. I think this is like three quarter inch, maybe even an inch, so it's a little bit wider. But um, if you have a white power cord or, or something that if it's going up against a white wall or white baseboard, you may want white just to, so it doesn't stand out as much. Um, I use these quite a bit. It's like a roll. These are like little Velcro tie straps. So that you just break one off and then it's got like a little hole in it. And you wrap it around your cable on one end. I'll use this for an example. You feed this through. Now you can have that cinched and have it there all the time. And then you wrap up your cord or whatever. It's good for like charging cables and stuff that you may need to use often and you don't want to lose the actual wrap that's around it like this is this would be loose um, so these are these are good and i think i got like a three pack of these rolls there was like a ton of them in there and uh, it wasn't very expensive so i'll link those down below as well so it's good to have in some circumstances um heavy duty double-sided tape this is a uh, gorilla tape uh, so if you're familiar with like Gorilla Glue, they also make like duct tape, stuff like that, packaging tape. It's like a really strong, um, double-sided tape. Um, but it depends, it does depend on the material. If it's like a super smooth material, this doesn't stick as well as the regular. And some surfaces, neither one of them stick very well. Uh, then of course we got the, um, the four inch cable ties. I believe these are 12 inch. These things come in all kinds of different sizes, but I almost always use either the ones that come with the fasteners or the eight inch. Um, let me talk about screws for one second. So you, you can use drywall screws. I use drywall screws for a long time. They work, you can get them in, they're cheap. The cheap, cheaper, usually cheaper than anything else. Um, but they are a very coarse thread and not the best for wood. So I do recommend using like a wood screw. And my most common one I use is a three quarter inch. The only problem is most wood screws have the uh, beveled head on them. So if you're gonna countersink them, that's fine. But if you're trying to mount something and you want it to be flat, it's not the best option. I do use these quite a bit, but what I've been using more of lately, and I found these at my local hardware store, they're called Tex, T-E-K-S. Um, and they're a lath screw. So if you know what lath is, it's like, like a plaster type of material. Um, you, you might hear somebody like say plaster and lath where they, they put the lath, like you might have a wood surface or plywood. They put this like metal lath on that surface and then that's what they use to hold the plaster on. These are, and these are called lath screws. It's, it's to, made to put that metal lath on there. And the reason they're specialized is because 
they have a really wide head. It's almost like a, they have a built-in washer on the head. Um, and this is, and it's flat on the bottom side. So this is perfect for mounting power strips and surge protectors and cable shelves under a desk. Um, I have a half inch and also a three quarter inch. I usually don't get anything bigger than that because most desks are not thicker um, than an inch, maybe inch and a half uh, in, in most circumstances. So you don't want a long screw, you're just gonna go through it. These things are awesome. They are a little bit more expensive because they're a specialized. I'll see if, and I, I say I got these local at the hardware store, maybe I could find a cheaper version on Amazon. I'll link that below, but these things are, <sighs> they're perfect. Um, but I mean, there's like 200 in here or something. So the last one, you get a box of these and probably gonna last you forever. Um, let me talk about a couple of things that I've, oh, one more thing. So uh, like a like tidy wrap, cable tidy wrap. So it's like this, you know, you can untwist it and you can use this like if you wanna bundle a bunch of cables together and just keep them tidy. Um, I use this occasionally, but not a whole lot. I use it more for audio video setups, home theater type stuff, like speaker, the hide speaker wire, because most speaker wire is like uh, silver or gold. So this is good. And I also have white. Uh, like again, if it's running against a white baseboard or something. So I, I use that occasionally. Now here are some fasteners that I don't use a whole lot because I just, they just don't hold up. So these, they're like a little square with double-sided tape on them. And they're really good for putting cable ties in, but just the adhesive, it's not that great. Um, I don't know, I don't think it's 3M, it doesn't say 3M on them. But they do have two holes in these as well, so they can be screwed in. So this is, you want like a four-way mounting point that could be you could use the same screws and, and cable ties from this kit with these so I, I do use those occasionally um, and then these but uh, these are both 3m this one um, I know it's hard, probably hard to see but it's like a little clip so if you're just putting like a single cable and it's a smaller type cable press it so it kind of opens up so you would peel off mount it put your cable in there and then it, it clamps it down and then you squeeze it to open it back up so this is good for like uh, USB cables um, you might be able to run two USB cables but thick cables won't go through they probably have bigger ones but again the, these double-sided fasteners they just don't seem to last like on most surfaces they always come off. That's, I'd rather much, much rather just use the, the the mounted ones. And these, these are something else that I've also used. It's like again, double-sided tape. You stick them on there, and then you can loop through and cinch it down. Cinch your cables down, but then you can remove it if you need to. The only thing I found with these is they do get brittle after about a year, and they'll break. So I don't really use these much anymore either. But those are some options. If you don't want to put holes in anything, you could use one of these options instead. But my go-to is right here. Double-sided tape, Velcro, 8-inch cable ties, and then this, these, this fastener kit that has the screws and the 6-inch cable ties in it. So, Next up, we're going to talk about um, cable management trays. Um, channels, shelving, things that I use to help hide cables. Um, so first off, if you need to run, to run cables through a desk and you're gonna put a hole in it, you can get these cable grommets. Uh, I think I got these at my local hardware store, but they have them on Amazon as well. I'll link some, you can get different sizes. These are two and three eighths, um, and you can keep them completely closed, or then they have like three different sizes. So they have like a medium, there's the, like a, there's a small pass-through, uh, large, and then like a very small. So you get like a small, medium, large, or you can close it completely if you don't want to use it at that time. So you just cut your hole, pop these down in there, open it up to the size that you need. There's different types of these. Um, these are probably the most common ones. <clears throat> use some of them on our podcast desk behind me for cable pass-through, and I'll be using these on um, a build 
uh, here that I'm doing right at the same time as this cable management video. So those are good to have. Next up are these just like plastic, like J channel, I guess if what you would call them. So you put your double sided tape on the back or you could probably drill holes and mount it with screws. You attach it to your surface, you can run cables through there. Depending on how many you have, this may be a great option. Um, I've used this behind entertainment centers and on walls along baseboards and stuff too. It's a good option. Uh, you can get it in different colors. So I have white, I have black, and then different sizes. So here's a longer piece, like a four foot piece. Um, these I bought like a whole box of them. So you get like a box of like six or eight. Uh, I'll link those, you know, of course they'll be linked down below, but these are, these are really cool, really cheap and easy if you're just trying to hide a few cables. If you're just trying like to hide like one cable, like a power cord, so going to like maybe an RGB light, um, a gaming sign, uh, I use these for my arcade cabinets to run the power cords, for my nano leaves to hide the power cords. So again, it's usually double sided. Um, you can put maybe one one to very to maybe two if they're really really thin cables in this um, so it's it's an option don't use this under the desk for much but it's good for walls and baseboards and things like that um, what I used on my build this last time for the first time was this uh, it's EK Y E C A Y E um, and it's designed to conceal cables so it's a kit so you get um, eight of the channels, which are like 15 inches long. You get the couplers, you get a T, you get teeth, a T fitting, some elbows, um, inside and outside, some adhesive tape, and then you, and they also give you some screws and anchors if you don't want to use the adhesive tape. But um, you can see I've used a lot of this. So here's the double sided tape. It's not 3M. It's some cheaper stuff. But actually, it's, this is really sticky, so it works really well. It's going to be a pain in the butt to get off, but. You can see this, all the screws, all the different. So here's a, a corner piece. And then here's an actual, here's a smaller piece of a piece that I had cut. So you can see, you attach this to the wall, put your cables in there, and then this can just snap right over top of it. So I use this to hide my ethernet and power cables going from my desk over to my plug because it's not right behind my desk. And I also use this going up to my gaming sign. So it's actually all one channel and I can run more cables in there if I need to. So this is a really good kit. Um, I'll probably be using some of this for my other builds that I've got that I'm working on for my son and my son-in-law. This is probably going to be my like go-to. This is probably what I'll use most of the time um, instead of stuff like this where it's going to be visible. This is really good if it's going to be visible because I think you can paint it as well. Um, if your desk doesn't come with any kind of cable management tray, some of the sanding desks come with them, so you don't need to buy your own. No, not all of them. The one my son just bought didn't really come with one. It came with a very small one, but I don't really like the placement of it. So I bought these to just have in case we need them. So it come, it's a two pack. I believe these are it's Vivo. Uh, I think they're about 15 inches, 14 or 15 inches. And they're metal. Um, and you could probably use double sided tape if you really wanted to, but it does have mounting holes in the top so you can mount it with screws. And then it's got two large holes to actually run cables from the bottom. And then you've got your, your channel. So you put a couple of these side by side or more than one if you needed them. There are longer versions similar to this. They don't make one that's longer than this. Um, and I did see one that was like 50 inches, but it was like a hundred bucks. I think these were like $40 for two of them. So it just depends on if you need more than one or not. But uh, I'm gonna try these out. I think these are gonna work really well. Another thing that I used on my bill because it's a sit stand desk and I'm gonna put one on my son's desk as well is these cable splines. So it's from Mount It and it's just a, uh, it's almost like a, a big cable snake. You, you run your cables down through it. You can actually remove pieces of it if you don't need it to be the full size. 
and it does come in a few sections. So here's one section here. So you can see it's flexible, like a snake, or a, a, a spine, if you will. Um, did I call it spine before? <laughs> anyway, spine. So yeah, it's got uh, the sides open up, so you can sneak your cables through one side or the other. And it has a uh, weighted base, so if you're just gonna want it to lay on the floor, or you can also mount it, it has some mounting holes. I have mine mounted to the wall, and then it has, then I have it going into a channel. And then it has the, uh, there's another bracket in here. Yeah, here it is, here's the, here's the top one. So this is where, this would be the part that would go. You would mount these two holes under the desk, run your cables through it, and like I said, it's in sections, plus you can pop you can pop these off. There's like a little tab. Take a screwdriver and pop these off and make it whatever length you want. You just want to make sure that you make it long enough to where whatever the top height of your desk is going to be so it doesn't pull your cables out um, because that would be bad. So if you look at mine when it's laying on the floor at sitting height, it does look like it's pretty long. That's because I wanted the full maximum height out of mine so that I could work underneath of it easily and comfortably. So mine's pretty long. I don't know if we'll need his to be that long or not, but we'll see. And then the last thing I want to talk about that I'm also going to use on his PC is this, um, it says MCH, uh, it's a CPU holder. So this is mounts under the desk and you can actually, it holds the tower. So. I made one out of pipe for mine, but I'm gonna use this kit for his, um, see how it works. Because it was actually probably cheaper than buying the threaded pipe, because that stuff's really expensive now. Um, okay, so here is the, looks like this is the bottom. So you have your holder coming through here, the PC will sit in there. Here is the other half, this piece. So you mount this under the desk. This goes in here and it's adjustable to whatever height you need it to be. So we'll see how it works. Um, may or not be better than what I did. Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, so th those are some of the options to use for routing cables, holding cables and some options if you're using a standing desk or whatnot, so. All right, the last topic I wanted to cover is power. So surge protectors, power strips, adapters, uh, you know, people use, there, there's a ton of different stuff, things out there, and people use all kinds of different things. You know, for the longest time, I double-sided taped everything, or I put it in some kind of cable tray, um, but lately, I've, uh, mostly been using mountable surge protectors and power strips just because I like the security of them being screwed in and they just can't fall down and you know cause everything to to turn off um, I've had that happen you know power strip just the double-sided tape comes loose nothing will stay plugged into it or you have a bunch of uh, converters or these big power bricks and just pulls the thing right out after you know a few months so and if, if there's only one thing you take away from this whole video, it's please do not use cheap power, power, power strips or, more importantly, surge protectors. Get a good surge protector. You know, if you're building a gaming setup and you're spending thousands of dollars on it, you don't want a $20 surge protector being the only thing between you and a surge or a lightning strike or, or anything that may just be able to ruin the entire setup. So please spend a little bit of money on this. If you buy a good one, it'll last you a long time, uh, especially some of the ones I'm gonna show you. So that's what I'm gonna start off with. These commercial electric, they're, they're like workshop power or surge protectors and they're metal, they're all metal. Um, this is what I used on my build. Um, I've used the, I have them out in my garage and a couple of other places. Um, these things are, they're awesome. Um, not only because they're all metal, but they're just, they're really well built. Um, they tend to have a higher joule rating. So the joule rating on a surge protector, 
the higher the jewel rating, the, the better the protection. Now, granted, depending on what you're plugging into it, it may not matter. I mean, most people are plugging into a single outlet on a 15 or 20 amp circuit. Um, so, you know, you don't want a $3,000, you know, surge protector. I mean, that's just overkill unless, unless you got something really expensive uh, plugged into it, which some people might. But these, um, it'll give you the joule rating. So the, the smaller one is 700 joules, and that's how many joules, that's how big of a surge it can protect against before basically it, it, it's just destroyed because anything over that, it will just basically burn the circuitry in this thing because it won't be able to react and handle that. It won't be able to dissipate it, if you will. I'm not an electrician. You can, you can look up the definition and the, the whole joule rating system and, you know, learn about that. But, um, like I said, 700, the bigger one, which, um, has more outlets, has 10 outlets and has the, some that are spaced farther apart. So it's good for larger power bricks is up to 1500. Usually anything 1500, like 2000 and higher is, is really, really good. Um, this depends on what you're plugging into it. If it's a smaller setup, smaller one's going to be fine. If you don't need that many outlets, whatever. But I just want to show you the reason I like these so much is, you know, yes, they're metal, but uh, more importantly, they have mounting tabs on them. So they're easy to screw under your desk and you don't have to use double-sided tape. You could probably get away with double-sided tape, but I wouldn't recommend it because these things are pretty hefty. And you can find these in different length cords. This is the six outlet, it has a four foot cord. And I mean, look at the size of that too. Like this isn't no wimpy, like, extension cord like this is the real deal like i said it's and it also has um it'll tell you if it's protected and grounded which if your outlet's not grounded you need to get that fixed um because this won't work if you don't have a ground or it's not grounded properly when you get a surge that's what it uses to dissipate that uh, excess electricity it sends it to the ground so if you're not properly grounded a surge protector is not going to work so Please keep that in mind. I don't care what kind you have. If you don't have a properly wired circuit, an outlet, you're you're not. It's not going to protect you. Um, then you got your switch, uh, on and off and reset. Like I said, I mean these things are just weighty. And then it has, like I said, it has the holes, one on each end on this one, so you can easily mount that. And it's not going anywhere when you mount that bad boy. And another thing too, the cheaper surge protectors, like when you plug plugs into them, you, they, they get loose and they work. I mean, all of them, if you use them enough, they're gonna loosen up over time. But this one, man, these just, like, really hold stuff nicely. You know, the cheaper plastic ones, not, not so much. Um, you know, here's a bigger version of that. This is the one I actually have on my build, which is a dual PC, so I needed the extra outlets, and I wanted the higher jewel rating, and it has a 10 foot, or a 15 foot cord rather, so again, super beefy. This one's got four mounting points on it, all metal. The four on this side are spaced a little farther apart. I love these things. This one is about 45 bucks. The other one was, I think, around 30. Amazon doesn't carry anything like this. I wasn't able to find anything with a metal housing and that was mountable. And like I said, I got this at a Home Depot locally to me. Probably Ace and Lowe's and other places have them too. But like I said, I'll, I'll link everything down below so you can check it out. But if you can get these, I highly recommend them. If you can't get those and you're just looking for something that's decent on Amazon, these uh, Trond, the T-R-O-N-D surge protectors, they are plastic, but they're mountable. Um, this one is one, two, three, four, but it also has four USB ports. So if you need to have USB charging, um, it's not a hub, but if you just need something to charge, like your mouse, your headphones, um, your phone, like, and you don't need it to hook up to your PC, these are great for that. So I'll probably be using these. Um, this one is actually surprising because it's four only four uh, plugs, but it's 1440 joules so that's that's why i like that's why i went with these because the joule rating was was decent um, but like i said they are plastic so there is that and it's got the holes where you can mount it um like 
to a wall or something like that, but it also has the tabs on the end with the holes in them. That's what I'm gonna be using. Just don't crank these down because it is plastic and you could break it. And they also give you this like little spacer for the holes on the back as a template. So if you wanted to use those and not uh, use the tabs, you can. But again, this is plastic, but um, it's a good option. These weren't super expensive. Like I said, I got them on the Amazon and just being able to mount and do also do USB. So if a USB is a big, uh, big deal and you want that option, this could be the, the better choice for you. Or you could just use like a little USB hub. That's what I did is I have like a little 10 port USB anchor hub uh, under my desk and that's what I use for charging. And then this one is the, again, it's the same Tron, that same brand. This one's much larger. Um, so you've got uh, 13 outlets and also four USB charging ports and it's got a 10 foot cord on it. But again, it's plastic, but if you need more outlets, then this may be the better choice. And these are spaced a little bit farther apart and it has the ones in the middle. So if you have a lot of power bricks, this could be the better choice. And it's got the mounting tabs on it as well. So wanted to show you a couple options. Like those are the two that I would go with. Um, this one is, it has an 18 month warranty. Let me see if it has the jewel rating on it. This one is 4,000 joules. Hmm, that's really good. So this would be a really good option if you can't find the metal ones. Um, this, I'll probably be using this on one of the two builds that I'm working on now. And then you also have power strips. So let's be clear, like power strip, it can trip if it's overloaded, but it's not gonna really give you the protection of a surge protector. So don't use just a power strip. Like you'll get some protection, but not the same. So just be clear, clear about that. Um, on my build, I used both. So here's a small one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's eight, Th these are plastic and I got these on Amazon, but they do have metal mounting tabs so that you can screw them underneath. And this one has a 10 foot cord. And then I also got a larger version. I think this one's like 15 and it only has a four foot cord. Um, and I, I wanted that on, and you can get different cord links with a lot of these, but um, one, two, three, four. 16 outlets on this one but this is really nice for larger desks or if you may you need power across the desk and not just one spot you could use this as well as the surge protector you could plug this into the surge protector and there's some people out there be like oh you shouldn't plug a power strip into a surge protector i mean this has overload protection but it doesn't have really surge protection so it'll be fine like i said i'm not a licensed electrician you know you, you check with somebody if you don't feel comfortable but that's what i use I have this same one, so I have this mounted underneath my desk, and then I have this mounted kind of, this is probably more down on the end, and I have this mounted kind of in the middle, plugged into this. That way I've got plenty of power wherever I need it on my desk, and I, and I don't use all of these. I use maybe six of them, but it's just really nice if you've got big power bricks like this. Um, and that one's, that one's pretty good. It's got a pretty good hold on it. Um, I don't think it'll stand up as well as the all metal, um, even though the, the actual plug pieces are plastic, but not too terrible. A couple other things I wanted to mention that can be helpful. Um, these little pass-through adapters. So it's a three prong, like four inch pigtail type, maybe six inch. And the cool thing is, is if you're in a tight space, or if you don't have enough plugs on like something like this or even like this, you plug this in. So now you've got a pigtail so you can plug something in here and then tuck it up in your cable tray or, or whatever. But then you can still use this. So, and I have white ones and also black ones. So this is a really cool option. Um, I, use, I use several of these under my desk for these big power, stri uh, power bricks. It's uh, really helpful. Another thing I use too, um, not as much because I try to use these, uh, is this four, um, four-way splitter. So you plug this in 
and it gives you four flexible ends. And again, this is really good for like these large power bricks when you need to be able to tuck them up into like, like the cable tray I showed earlier. Tuck this up in there, plug all your power bricks in there, or if you just need an extension to get it off of the power strip, these are great. Um, again, I'll put the links to everything down below. I mean, primarily this is what I would use is the metal surge protector, maybe a power strip if I need it, and then some of these adapters, depending on how many things I was plugging in and if I needed the room or not and for these ex extensions. So I hope that's helpful. Hope that gives you some ideas if you're planning a new build or going to revamp yours and help you improve your cable management. Now I'm going to show you a couple of examples of builds that I've got going on um, and how I'm going to use all this stuff. They're a little bit different, so I won't be using everything exactly the same. And then I'll show you some more details under my desk on specifics that I did uh, for my build as well. So um, there's a full build video of my setup uh, on my channel. If you want to check that out, I'll link it. And then also the two new build videos that I'm doing, I'm going to try to have them done around the same time as this video. So I should be able to link those as well. So you get three different examples of uh, three different setups. So I hope that's helpful. Um, let's get to it. All right, so I'm filming under my son's desk. Just to go over how everything's mounted now that all the cable management's done. You can see there's his mic stand. There's the power supply for the standing desk controls, which are also right there. So I've got those using the little fasteners with the screws so I can use the cable ties. That's what I used under here uh, mostly. And then I used some Velcro strapping. I like using the Velcro strapping on like monitors and keyboards and uh, those kind of wires just because you may need to take them loose more often. The power stuff like this, that stuff's not going to have to get moved much, if ever. So I uh, usually tie wrap it down. And here's the trays that we mounted. So we've got all the cables running through there. And here's the one that came with the desk. There is a hole right here for the keyboard and uh, mouse charging cable that does come out of the end, but nothing else is in there just because the rod for the desk motor that goes across the other leg does move in there. I didn't want to put a bunch of stuff in there and it get tangled up. So here's the search protector that I went with. You can see it's mounted with some screws. So I use those lath screws that have like the flat washer built into them. Um, here's one of those power adapters that I was talking about earlier. It has like the pass-through and then it goes into the cable tray. So it's one of the hue lights is plugged into that. Um, another one is plugged in here. There's all the power cords. And then everything going up to the PC. I just use the Velcro strapping. It goes up behind and you can see just loosely wrapped so that things can be easily removed and replaced. And then everything else runs down the cable spine. So power cable, ethernet cable, speaker cables are all running down that. That way as the disc is moved up and down, none of the cables will be pinched or pulled out. There's plenty of slack in there. Now I'm under my future son-in-law's desk. So you can see this one's a little bit different because it's a different desk frame. This one is not adjustable, at least not mechanically. Um, here is the surge protector. So this one is one of the plastic ones, one of the Trons. Again, it does have the mountable feet. It's hard to see because the screws are black, but they can't, this, I use the screws that came with it. Here's the Govi light strip adapter, which is this. Um, here's all of the power and um, random USB cables. Just got them tie wrapped up with some of the Velcro strapping. And this one is cool because it has USB ports built into it, which he's using, and plenty of future expansion as well. Hello, sir. Can I help you? Can I help you? Roar. <laughs> um. 
the power cable was a little bit challenging just because there was it was really long so i ended up instead of bringing it all the way back and putting it in to the trays that i mounted i ended up tie wrapping it tie wrapping it on the end using some of the little black clips with the screws and tie wraps which i put a bunch of those also throughout here for other future cables and then that goes over to some channeling the plastic cable channeling and then comes down so we've got a brush plate here this is um, USB cable for the headset stand going up to the PS4 Ethernet jacks which the PS4 is mounted on the wall so we were able to go through the wall behind the TV for that one but if we when we plug the laptops in that we can use that if they don't want to use wireless and then of course there's the power plug for the surge protector all going up the, the cable channel link. So I can put another little slit in the side of this for the Ethernet cables. Um, I'm, I might try to get some white ones just to maybe it'll blend in a little better. I don't know. And then the rest of this is pretty much just the cable tray that goes all the way across. Of course, we got the grommets where the cables are coming down. Nothing really on this side, but there is room for another laptop on this end for my daughter if she wants to bring hers down here so they can game side by side. And of course, there's a cable grommet um, going up right there as well. So much simpler, but a lot less cables because there is no PC under here um, or speakers or any of that stuff. So a little bit easier on this one. And here we have underneath my desk, which is the dual PC setup. I'll show you some of the details about it. Underneath my desk which is the dual, like I said, dual PC. So there's a ton of wires. There's just a ton of stuff hooked up under here. But uh, this autonomous desk did have this cable tray that it came with that goes all the way across. Um, then I have surge protector. Again, mounted with screws. And then also have a just a AC outlet strip. So that, I think this is the, one of the Amazon ones. I think it's the 12, it goes 8 or 12, it goes all the way across. This just makes it really convenient to plug stuff in that doesn't need to run all the way back to the actual surge protector. Because there's a ton of power bricks and power adapters on this that I'm using some of those pass-through adapters for. You can see here's one here that I don't have anything plugged into currently. And then of course all the monitor cables, everything going up to the monitors, keyboard, mice. Those are all Velcroed with the Velcro wrap. This is the right monitor arm, actually the left if you're sitting at the desk. And then here's the one with the dual stacked one that's in the middle. Um, I do have a headphone stand that's just screwed underneath. And then that is my mic arm mount. So you can see those cables coming across then I use the the black cable ties uh, with the little adapters with the screws in them pretty much use those for everything the the, the two-sided tape ones I just they ended up falling off so I just trust these better you can see this one here doesn't have anything on it it used to have something on it that got moved and then of course this is a dual motor so there's one right there Here's the controller, and then there's another motor on that side above that PC. And then, of course, you have all the PC wiring. So all of that's using the cable wrap, the Velcro wrap for the, uh, the cables on those. And then everything that needs to go up to the other PC, you can see, goes up the hole right here behind it. And again, wrapped up with the Velcro wraps. And then I have the cable spine on here as well that has power, Ethernet, um, a few other cables running down. So as the desk is raised and lowered, no issues there. And I have this mounted to the wall and then going into the white cable sh cable molding. One, one going all the way down there to the actual plug because the plug's pretty far away behind the TV. And then I also have a piece going up. It goes all the way up for the power cord going into 
my LED gaming sign. And on this side is the controls for the standing desk. Then I also have an HDMI adapter for VR headset. So it's I can just plug in the headset right there. It's got a little piece of Velcro on it. Keep it up out of the way. And then as far as the mount for the PC under the desk, this is just the black piping that I bought at hardware store and just got the pieces for the right length. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Hopefully you, hopefully you found some useful tips as you're planning your next build or maybe even in your current setup. Um, I'll be showing some more um, info in the other builds that I'm doing, so I'll, I'll uh, link those out down below as well if you want to check out those other builds to see how I actually applied this stuff. Um, but hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, if you did, hit that like button. Consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you.